Okay, so I'm about to share with you what I think is the number one best math shortcut ever, and it has to deal with fractions. Now, fraction or fraction problems is probably the number one area where most students get uh, wrong answers. Nobody likes fractions, and I get it, because you have to hassle around with the lowest common denominator, et cetera, when you're adding and subtracting fractions. But this particular uh, shortcut or hack will solve your uh, fraction problems easy as pie. Now, if you've never seen this before, well, you're in for a real treat, but let's go to uh, test your current fraction skills with this simple little problem. So we have two-fifths minus one-third. Let's see if you can figure this out without using a calculator. If you have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to explain this problem and this fantastic, probably my favorite, number one hack or shortcut in all of mathematics in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so we are talking about fractions here, and a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm good in fractions. I don't need your little shortcut. Well, fractions, okay, what I'm talking about in terms of this uh, shortcut, don't just apply to numeric fractions, but they also apply to algebraic fractions as well. And I can tell you from someone who's been studying math and teaching math for decades, I have a degree in math, master's degree, this uh, little shortcut comes up over and over and over again. But let's go ahead and take a look at the right answer. We have two-fifths minus one-third. What is the correct answer? Well, the correct answer here is one-fifteenth. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A-plus for your knowledge of subtracting fractions. That is fantastic. But this is a very easy problem, okay? And hopefully, most of you got it right. And I'm only using this easy problem as a, kind of just to you know, start us off with a nice, simple problem so you can understand uh, this shortcut, this hack. This, this video is really not about subtracting and adding fractions. Of course it is, but really what I want to do is make sure you understand how to use this shortcut. All right, so here we have our fraction problem. Now, when you're dealing with fractions, okay, when we're either subtracting or adding fractions, what, what needs to be true? Well, what needs to be true is that our denominators must be the same, and if they are not the same, then, of course, we have to find something called the lowest common denominator. So what happens if we have a fraction problem where the denominators are the same? So whether it's addition or subtraction, well, these problems are very easy. So here, for example, four-fifths minus one-fifth, your eyes first need to go to the denominator. Like you're saying, all right, we have two fractions. We want to subtract them. Are the denominators the same? Yes, they are. So that means we just keep the denominator and then get to, to get the numerator, excuse me, all we have to do is actually subtract the respective numerator. So here this would be four minus one, which of course would be three, and that would be our numerator. And here is our entire answer. So when we're adding and subtracting fractions, what we have to do first is to make sure the fractions have the same denominator. And if they don't have the same denominator, then we have to find the lowest common denominator. All right, so let's take a look at another example before I uh, do the actual problem here. So here is 2 thirds plus 1 over 7, or 1 seventh. Well, here we want to add these fractions, 3 and 7. These are not the same number, so we need the lowest common denominator. Okay. Now, how to find the LCD? Actually, this is not as easy. Well, it's not that difficult, but most people uh, really couldn't give a procedure on how to find the LCD. So uh, here is a simple problem, and a lot of you are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know what the LCD is. You know, you're making this a lot harder than it is. Well, yes, this is an easy problem, and a good way to think of the lowest common denominator is the lowest number that both these numbers go into without a remainder. So 21, okay, we could take uh, 21 and divide it by 7 with no remainder, and we could take 21 divided by 3 with no remainder. That's the lowest number, right? There are other numbers that we can divide into, but this is the lowest number, so this makes this the lowest common denominator, or it's the lowest common multiple between 3 and 7. 
But uh, let's suppose our um, question was this, 2 over 35 plus 1 over 76. Let's say our denominators were uh, 35 and 76. Well, finding the LCD is not going to be so fun. Matter of fact, what if our, our denominators were 358 plus 762? Well, that's even going to be, you know, uh, more challenging. Matter of fact, a lot of you are going to look like that and be like, all right, I'm out of here, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I'm leaving your video and unsubscribing to your channel. Well, don't do that because we could even do this problem right here uh, pretty easily with this little shortcut, okay? But I'm just trying to, you know, really get your attention here that finding the LCD, there is a lot we need to know on actually how to do this. And if you need help with fractions and LCD and the LCM, lowest common multiple, well, I'll give you some uh, specific recommendations here in just one second. But uh, let's just go ahead and uh, look at this problem, right? So now we know that the lowest common denominator is 21. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that we need to write each of these denominators or each of these fractions such that the uh, denominators are 21. So we're going to have to change a 3 to a 21 and a 7 to a 21. So how can I change a 3 to a 21? Well, we just multiply by 7. How can I change a 7 to a 21? We'll just multiply by 3. So what, uh, what we have to do here is write equivalent fractions. We're not going to break these fractions. We're just going to write them in a different way such that 21 is the common denominator. Okay, so this should uh, seem pretty familiar to uh, most of you out there. So here's our fractions, 2 thirds plus 1 seventh. Again, we want to write each uh, denominator with 21. So this 3, we're going to multiply by 7. But if we're going to multiply the uh, denominator by 7, we also have to multiply the numerator by 7. So this fraction is going to be 7 times 2, or 14, over 7 times 3, or 21. Okay, same thing here. We have 1 over 7. Let's change that 7 to a 21 by multiplying by 3, but we also have to multiply the numerator by 3, so we're going to end up with 3 over 21. So now our problem is 14 over 21 plus 3 over 21. Okay, so these fractions here are the same or equivalent to these fractions. Okay, if I said reduce or simplify these fractions, we would get back to our original fractions. But uh, the um, advantage here is that now we have common denominators, so we can just simply add the numerators and be done. Okay, so 14 over 21 plus 3 over 21, we're going to uh, add those numerators. So 14 plus 3 is 17 over 21, and there you go. We are done. All right, so once again, this is a pretty uh, simple problem, and I would say most people did this problem in this manner. Now, I want to stress that you have to understand how to find the LCD and how to add and subtract fractions uh, using the lowest common denominator. So what I'm about to show you is a shortcut, okay? I wouldn't say you want to use this uh, as your only uh, method to handle adding and subtracting fractions, but it is such a powerful little hack or technique, and I'm going to show you it to you right now. Okay, so this method, I like to describe it as the bow tie method, okay? Bow tie, so a bow tie, so a bow tie is what? Well, here is a person a bow tie is one of these things right there. Now, a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I bet you wear a bow tie and you got a pocket protector and pencils and calculators. Nah, no, nah, I, I like to think I'm relatively <laughs> average looking. But anyways, a bow tie has this shape, right? And nothing against bow ties as well. I think they're pretty cool. All right, so this is a bow tie shape. So this is kind of the general shape that you want to be thinking about. All right, so here is how it works. You have to follow this pattern in this specific order. Okay, you have to do it in this order, uh, and if you don't do this, uh, if you don't do this pattern in this order, you're going to uh, make a mistake. All right, so step number one is that we're going to multiply this denominator by this numerator. Okay, so I'm going to kind of uh, describe that as an arrow. So it's going to be right here. Seven times two. This is number one or step one. Okay, so seven times two is what? That's 14. We're going to put this up in the numerator. Okay. All right, so that's step one. Again, you're going to start right here. Matter of fact, I'll put a one right there for those of you that want to take notes. Okay, now step two is we're going to go the other way. All right, so this is going to be three times one or whatever the numerator uh, is. So this denominator times this numerator. So it's this direction from here, the lower left to the top right. So three times one is what? That's three. Okay, so we're almost done. All we have to do now is finish up with step number three, which is multiplying the denominator. So it's going to be 3 times 7, which is 21. 
Now let's take a look at what we have here. When we did our little uh, zigzags, our little cross multiplication right here, this forms the numerator. So 14 plus 3, that's 17. And look at our denominator, it's 21. I mean, we are done. So you just could look at this problem as, all right, 7 times 2, that's 14 plus. Okay, whatever operation this is, remember this is going to be the numerator, 3 times 1, that's 3 over 3 times 7, that's 21. So we got 17 over 21. You don't have to uh, go over here and be like, all right, what's the LCD? Oh, the LCD is 21. Let me go ahead and do all this, uh, you know, rewriting of these fractions. You know, this is going to save you a lot of time. But this particular shortcut or hack, I'm going to tell you right now, comes in uh, super powerful in algebra, okay? Of course, in arithmetic, there's only one drawback to this uh, bow tie method, okay? And that is sometimes you can end up with a denominator that's not the lowest common denominator. So your final answers, you want to make sure that you fully reduce, okay? So sometimes you'll end up with a denominator. Again, that's not the lowest common denominator, but you will have the right answer. You just have to reduce. So this is a lifesaver for those of you that are struggling with adding and subtracting fractions. Now you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what if I had like three and one half uh, plus one and one seven or one and one sevenths? Well, these are mixed number fractions, so just write them as improper fractions and then use the bow tie method. So three and one half, you would just go what? Two times three, that's six plus one. So you have seven over two plus seven times one is seven plus one, that would be eight over seven. So now you have two improper fractions and now you can go ahead and use the bow tie method. Okay, so let's go to take the next step. And uh, that is to see how this bow tie method uh, can be used in algebra, right? So here is an algebra problem. So we have this fraction minus this fraction. Now in algebra, we don't technically call these fractions. These would be described as rational expressions, but that's not that important. But what is important is how we can use the bow tie method to get the right answer. So if I said subtract these expressions here, you might be saying, okay, well, what do I do? Well, use the bow tie method. So this is going to be step one. X times 2X is what? That's 2x squared. Now, this is a subtraction problem. Remember, this bow tie method only deals with adding and subtracting fractions. Okay, so now we're going to go y times 3. So in algebra, that's 3y. Okay, minus 3y. This is our numerator. And then lastly, our denominator is simply y times x or xy or yx. And there you go. And we are done. Okay, so this uh, bow tie method, I'm telling you right now, from decades and decades and decades of teaching and helping and doing math on my own at all levels of mathematics, okay, is just a lifesaver. So you definitely want to put this in your math tool bag. But uh, now let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is have you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now I definitely need your help to continue to grow on YouTube. I've been really, uh, you know, very pleased on how my channel has been growing over the last uh, several uh, years, probably like the last five years, but I've tr I started my channel like 14 years ago. I didn't really do too much initially, then 10 years ago, you know, I started putting more videos, maybe like five, six years ago, I really started becoming more committed. But what's happened over the years is that, you know, my channel has grown and grown and grown. And uh, I think that's an illustration of anything that we put our focus to and our energy to. And if you're trying to get better at something, you know, you're going to eventually really make some nice gains. And it's no different in math, okay? If you're struggling in math, it's going to seem for like a long time, you're like, oh, I'm not getting this and this and that. But after a while, you start, you know, things start making sense. You know, uh, your, your kind of light bulbs start going on. You're like, oh, wait, I get this, I get this. And then you just start building momentum. And, you know, again, I don't think it's uh, anything that's just with math. I think it's anything we concentrate on in life. But I say that because for a lot of you out there that are looking to learn math, you got to be willing to put in the time and effort before you get that return. And don't get discouraged, you know, if you're struggling, stick with it, okay? But the thing that you need is great math instruction. What I try to do is teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, then check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. And the stuff that I was talking about, fractions, how to find the LCD, et cetera, check out uh, these two courses, my Math Foundations course or my Math Skills Rebuilder course, right? I'll teach you everything you need to know about fractions and much, much more. But in terms of YouTube, I definitely need your help to reach as many people as possible. So what you can do is just hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. 
All right, so let's go ahead and do this simple little prom here because now that we know the bow tie method, this will be easy. Now, I have to caution you that when you are subtracting fractions, you always need to be very, very careful, okay? There's a lot of errors, and uh, I'm not gonna get into it in this particular video, but um, adding fractions, eh, pretty easy. When you're subtracting, you gotta be very careful with this negative sign. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and use the bow tie method. Now here, if we didn't use the bow tie method, we would uh, do what? Well, we don't have the same denominator. The LCD is uh, 15, so we'd have to rewrite each fraction, and you know, of course, add the respective, uh, subtract the respective numerators, but here, we can just use the bow tie method. All right, so how's it gonna work? We're gonna start again right here with, with this uh, denominator in the bottom right, so it's gonna be three times two is what? That's six. Now, because we have a subtraction, uh, problem, you know, that subtraction operator comes next. And then it's going to be step two. Remember, this denominator times this numerator, five times one is five. This is our numerator, and then our denominator is simply going to be five times three, or 15. So here we have six minus five is one, or one over 15, and we are done. Okay, so I can go on and on and on with different examples, more challenging examples. But when it comes to fractions or rational uh expressions in mathematics. I'm telling you, so many uh, you know, students make errors. You gotta be very, very careful when you're dealing with fractions, whether it's arithmetic or algebra. But if you remember this uh, little shortcut, I can tell you right now it's gonna pay you dividends over and over again. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.